It's very interesting that this whole development is a result of a car ride. Bill and I went once, sometimes twice a week, to Immokalee to volunteer for the health care for the migrants. We were driving back one day, and I was at the wheel, and he was being quiet. And then in the course of the next few minutes, he said, who's taking care of the service industry in Naples? So the conversation evolved, and of course, the answer to his questions was either emergency room or neglect. We then did some investigation and found there were other states that had programs that had merit, value, we might be able to use those. And so when we would take our long weekend or travel, we would go to see what they were doing and how they were doing it and have a conversation with the nurses and doctors. In 1999, we retired. And as corny as this sounds, it's absolutely the truth. We were sitting at the kitchen table. We had planned to play golf that day, and it was raining. I was reading the paper, and he was just sort of staring. Bill was a soft-spoken, genteel man, and I thought, uh-oh, something's wrong. So I said, what's bothering you, honey? What's going on? And he said, I'm being crushed by my silence. We know too much. We know who they are. We know what they need. And we know how to get it. So we had a little more conversation. I got out a yellow pad and two pencils. And I said, let's go. And the two of us sat there with our pencils, our yellow pad, 24 hours, two pots of coffee, and we wrote the plan for the neighborhood health clinic. Then we divided up the responsibilities to activate the plan. My job was to look for a location and used equipment. His job was a bigger one than mine. His was to get volunteer physicians to come and help us. The whole idea that was on that yellow page was it would be all private money, working poor, and volunteerism. Three things. I had been on the board of directors of the hospital, Bill had been chief of medicine, so we had some leverage when we wanted to talk to them about it. He went with me, we went to see the CEO, the CFO, and we told them about our plan. Uh, we said we need space and we'll take anything. Uh, they had a dilapidated, run-down strip mall that they were trying to decide what to do with, and they gave us three rooms for a dollar a year. It was overpriced. We went in and we cleaned it, took the towel off the floor, painted the walls, and basically made it a little bit acceptable. Bill's responsibility was to go talk to the physicians. So he would sit in their waiting room till they were available to talk to him. And then he wanted to tell them about this wonderful idea we have and we want you to come and work. And oh, by the way, you're not getting paid. The next thing, and this was almost more important, who was gonna help us Be in addition to the uh, medical providers? So we made a list of the occupations that we would need. An attorney, CPA, pharmacist, fundraiser, and of course other medical people. I got a big chalkboard from the kids and I put the occupations up. Then I wrote the names of the people that we knew that had the same kind of fire in their belly that we had for poor people. We called them. There were 15. 
had them to our living room in January of 1999. We met for one hour. We showed them our plan and said, who's in? And there was a lot of conversation among themselves. And finally, Bill called for a vote and every hand went up. We then agreed to meet in February for one hour and we opened in April. Two meetings, one hour each, and we opened it. And what's the message? Pick the right people. The first night we saw eight patients. It was Bill and myself. I can't believe how naive we were. They were sick. I mean, really sick. We drove home that night into the garage and I was a slobbering mess crying. I had no idea that the people we were gonna see would be so sick. You know, are we in over our heads? What are we gonna do? What were we thinking? Um, and that was the genesis of the Neighborhood Health Clinic. Yes, we started as a door in a few rooms that they could come through to be comforted and healed. But the scope of what was needed was so wide and deep that we realized as we went forward, it has to be bigger. It has to be more comprehensive. We've got to do more. We did not develop the Neighborhood Health Clinic. Yes, we wrote the one page, and we still go back to the one page, and that's what we hold true to. The clinic developed itself. Everything that has happened here, everything, has had divine intervention. Very generous donors, many people who understood the mission and who our patients were stepped forward. And as a result of that, we were able to develop the program in a bigger direction. I'm very proud of what this community has created here. The campus is now complete. We have fulfilled all the needs. And, and you know, a lot of it, it was never on the yellow legal pad. It's what came through the door. For example, dentistry. The physicians came to us and said, these mouths are in dire need of oral hygiene and cleaning and extractions. Please get the dentist involved. Please get dental. But that hadn't been on our agenda. The other thing was education. We never thought about that. But in the meantime, you can't say, oh, by the way, you have di diabetes and take this. You've got to explain to the patient what it is. So now we have multiple educational programs. Where were we going to hold them? We needed to build an education center. And within the last few months, we've been able to achieve that. Who would have ever thought we needed to have a laboratory? Who would ever thought we needed to have a medication room of the scope that we have now? This is the Neighborhood Health Clinic campus. It belongs to the patients. I can't tell you how many times a new patient will walk in and say, I think I'm in the wrong place. This is so nice. No, no, no. It's nice because you deserve it. We understand how hard you work. We understand you don't feel well and you deserve an environment where you're respected and cared for. We have hundreds of volunteers. We have hundreds of donors. We are sustainable and 